Hello there, Jan Sverre here again. It's Christmas time in 2022, so Merry Christmas to everyone. And um, as you know, I've been working on the Smarty AT300, the combo machine, for the last months, and um, it's been scarce with update on the uh, Myford parts I have laying around. Um, there's a collection there, of course. But in this uh, video, I wanted to focus on um, the cross slide. In this case, I have uh, the long Super 7 cross slide versus the shorter ML7 cross slide. Mostly similar, but also a little bit different with regards to how they mount the top slide. And um, on the Super 7, of course, you have the, the low fixating pins uh, and uh, you, you mount it from the side here and locates this big bus in the middle and this allows um, a full 360 degrees rotation of the top slide while on the m 7 you use the t-slots here with screws and bolts with <laughs> bolts and nuts to um, to fixate the top slide this limits the travel the, the angle you can you can set it to but anyhow um, it also poses a little bit of a, uh, not a problem really, but uh, uh, if you have used it a long time with the same setting and um, maybe you have uh, at least uh, tightened them, not over tightened, but tightened them and then it's been working um, on these, uh, let's call it uh, fixation points, you might develop a problem where the T-slot grows. Uh, grows a little bit on you, just, just the same as you have on a on a, um, a Weiss in a milling machine. You will see that they also then grow a little bit the T slots around the mounting holes. Uh, so this means, at least meant that uh, on my example, the ML7 top slide, it was high here, had a high point here. And uh, this had to be fixed. And this, of course, meant that I also could take the time to make a video on that because it's, it's a common problem, I think. Uh, a challenge that might lead to you taking um, inaccurate conclusions or at least concluding too, too rapidly on, on just uh, what is where and how much is it. And then corresponding action scraping in this case would be... Uh, at least a little bit faulty. So as Richard says and, uh, and uh, his uh, mantra, be a detective. So I took the time to draw up this also, the situation so to speak, uh, where we have the, the, the um, cross slide from the side, from the end and from the actually the top then but also then showing the ways underneath here and with the uh, the screw uh, holes, the T slots here. And uh, the problem on the ML7 cross slide is that the point there, the, this one at least, where the um, bolt had been drawn into and then uh, making the T slot, T slot grow, is drawn here, so the raised area here to a lesser degree here and been inverted onto the plate which is how I measured it and of course this would pivot on that point so it'll be like pivoting on the point uh, there and this will make the reading I get uh, if I measure the wear which is I try to uh, to depict the wear here as being typically like so will not then be correctly read because you have this in addition making this pivot up and down so also then if you have a high in the middle situation not just like so but you have a a, a bowed surface like so you can make it contact all over i mean putting that onto the plate you can you can bend like so and then you can make it look like it has full contact and be 100% even though it is bold. So both these situations are, call it, 
makes the false uh, assumptions when regarding scraping and then how to proceed. So this has to be corrected. Take away and then get it flat. Read the correct way, which is the situation I had on the Super 7 saddle. Uh, cross light, I mean. This one where I had ground it on top. Of course, this begs the question, why don't grind both surfaces? And uh, my only defense or answer is that I should scrape these anyhow. I could, of course, have ground this side also. I did, however, grind the sides here. And that was because at least this side uh, should be used as reference for the dovetail measurements. If you envision the granite table here, and uh, locating this 90 degree here, exactly, and then also this direction, uh, so that I can read the lengthwise deviation or wear directly to the doll tail. Uh, after, of course, I have scraped the surface here, which will be this surface, and this. I know that this can be used also as a reference. So just sliding the indicator up and down like so. That's my typical, let's say, work uh, process. So this video is just about um, the first one at least, about the measuring and then uh, finding uh, true wear and then also then uh, with reference to this error, so to speak, just uh, a warning about that. And next video will be about scraping it. This being an M07 cross slide, and this being a Super 7. Uh, this is now ground, although quite battered from before. It is ground uh, on all surfaces, apart from on the side. This is to be scraped. So before we do that, we have to investigate the geometry and then to see in relation to this um, flat now ground surface how the underside looks like on this side we will take another approach we will then first just clean it up and measure as is to see the extent of uh, uh, wear so i just uh, clean it up and uh, stole it lightly on the top surface here First with the coarse side of the stone and then you identify very easily some and rapidly some high spots. Of course what is apparent is that this is high where the top slide mounting screws have um, the pulling force have made this T-slot grow a little bit. So this would ruin your measurement because when you put this on the plate, like so, it'll pivot on that spot, which is then the high spot. The same is true uh, on this side, there is a high spot uh, there, which needs to be taken down, otherwise you just pivot around the same spot there. It needs to be uh, more like this, I think, which is quite okay, this side. Take away all the grit. It's not completely flat, but more or less okay. So you need to do that in preparation for measuring on the plate. So I'll get back when this is done. The alternative to this method, of course, is to, to grind the surface, which I have done my friend's shop. Uh, then you can put this onto the magnet, because even though this surface is, is worn, it probably rides on the highest points. And uh, being probably low here, so I think that should be okay. Just put it like that on the magnet and then and grind. So, can I start with the measurement now? Thinking it is flat, is it flat? Well, 
uh, you can, if you at least have a suspicion about that, you can, you should be able to feel, okay, it's high in the middle. How much is it high in the middle then? Then you can hold on one corner and then try with the feeling gauge, the opposite corner, and it enters. And of course, then just which amount of feeling gauge, let's say it's 500 so millimeter. Is it on this side? Yes. Repeats. Yes. Yes. Is it in the middle? Well, it's around here. So it still pivots on this. So there's still more to go. So I would prefer, I think, to start off with grinding this down. But uh, if not, then you will have to work on that until you get down. Otherwise, this will happen. You'll think you could measure and you'll find the lower spot because this is more so often not in the middle here somewhere. Like you find the high here, then you go down and you find the lowest. And then there's not much change because this is the lowest point. But as you approach the sides, you will be able to see a lot of difference when I push down on each corner. So that's that's why when you have this high in the middle, you can't measure until it's totally flat. Or at least that's one effect of it. Because what you want to do now is, of course, to find the lowest spot and then mark the highest and then take down this. So I'll set that aside until I have either uh, ground it down professionally or in other, with other means taking it down. So now I have the side here, this um, bigger cross slide. Some, uh, someone have bitten, bitten off a little bit here. But still, it's, it should be okay. It's ground now flat on, on all sides. So it should sit. Oh, it's a little bit high in the middle there too. We can find out if that bothers my measurement by uh, setting zero here on the end. Then trying to manipulate it back and forth and it doesn't rock. So the error is minimal here. So we do the same here, we put this down and uh, we start measuring. And I can go like so to find the lowest spot. I had set this to zero, just uh, it. Okay, repeats, and then I can find the other. Then I only need the positive numbers here, like five there. And I go on the other side and I also approach 5 and even beyond to 6, around here. Now I can do the opposite side. See I have uh, 5 there too, go down. And I have as much as 7 here on that side. Let's just see if it repeats to zero again. Which it does. So um, I have a pretty bad um, uh, wear pattern here with um, the highest being here seven. On this side it's seven uh, hundreds uh, up from here, which is the zero mark, and here was three, I think it was not zero. Uh, so this is pretty bowed, and it's uh, going to ha have to go down, uh, of course, to zero, and even a little bit uh, further. So this is in the, in the region of actually, well, there's a lot of scraping here. So could be machined a little bit.